Welcome to another video from Dr. Locke. What we here have here is a standalone access control system. So I bought this one, it comes in a nice little box, costs you about 50 bucks off eBay. Here's a box, standalone access control system. I thought I'd buy it because it's for a very low security sort of application and basically to give give the door pa uh, access via pin number and it also came with the swipe cards as well so I thought for the price it's not too bad and then I thought it's probably going to be like every other standalone Chinese access control system that can easily be bypassed um, if you know what you're doing and to be honest with you that's a fair call it can it can be easily bypassed it can be bypassed in a couple of uh, methods one is by basically tampering with the wiring if you know which wires you can um, short out particular wires and the other way is uh, it's got a just a little type of hex screw on the bottom there is a bit of security so is it a great security product uh, no um, will it do for certain applications yeah it definitely will it's um you know if the if the person who comes across it knows exactly what it is it knows exactly how it works then yes they can they can defeat it with a pair of side cutters and a and a resistor or a bridge wire of some description it um, transmit in, in Wigan format so it can be used as a slave reader as well that's where you're going to get the most uh, protection from it if it's just used as a simple reader or keypad if you're using it as a standalone access control system it will work but it's not terribly terribly secure the tokens it uses are 125 kilohertz uh, these ones here these are the ones you buy them very cheap off eBay and um, yeah you just simply swipe it and away you go or you put your number in and you push hash and away you go some of the benefits and features of this are it's reasonably easy to program I found it very similar to the pack one where you simply put your master pin number in access the location and then access the what you want to change or add or delete a user and away you go so as far as programming yeah it's fairly reasonable the one factor I didn't like about it was that I can't turn the LED off so it's always going to draw some sort of attention to it because that that light is a constant light it also comes with a feature of the the doorbell right here which is just a dry contact so you could hook that up to just about any doorbell and um, have your doorbell and your access control all in the one so it's nice and neat so you've got keypad doorbell and swipe card all in the one so some of the features okay let's go over it so you can set your own admin <coughs> admin for the uh, sorry admin six digits as normal you can set your own users uh, four to six digits and from there you can move on you can have up to um, a thousand thousand users by the look of it you can set your own swiper tags these little ones here you have two cards that it came with an add an add and a delete it also has the option of factory default which is quite reasonable because then at least you can default everything and start again uh, the proximity range here is up, up to about 60, 60 mil, so that's not bad. Um, it has a few other functions such as door open and stuff. We'll go through them. So you can add your user, add proximity card, delete proximity card, um, access mode setting. So you can have it so that you need a swipe card and a PIN number, or you can have it just that you, you know, you can use a PIN number. The other one is access timer setting, so you can actually set the amount that, that it's going to go for. Default is 5 so that'll go on for five seconds you can use it for uh, one second or you can set it for something longer if you were doing it for a different type of application uh, door detection setting um, enables the door detection function this must be connected into the wiring okay so that's basically I think my door open too long you can set it on that as well uh, safe mode safe mode is basically lockout so if you enter in the wrong code 10 times it's going to lock you out for the period of 10 minutes and you can also set it to alarm mode as well so if somebody presents 10 times with the wrong code or wrong tag it can go into an alarm mode or trigger an external alarm it's not a built-in function it's just basically a trigger if it's done 10 times wrong so that's not too bad as well um, alarm output settings we've talked about that set uh, facility code uh, we've, we've done that and um, you can use it as a doorbell so the instructions are fairly reasonably simple to follow um, it has everything you would expect from a, a small access control system mounting is very simple you just take it off two screws through the back screws are included with it uh, amperage for your powered device is I think three amps so your maximum load you would draw through this particular unit is three amps uh, 12 volt DC as an example um, power voltage is 10 to 24 volt DC not AC so that just simply means that you can you know add it to a couple of different systems if you if you wish double it off or 
camera system or a, or an intercom system or something you might already have. It is waterproof to IP67 rating, uh, capacity of a thousand users, read a range four to six uh, centimeters, so about that far. Sorry, about where are we? About that far to that far it should read. Let's just test that. Okay, that's about 70, 60, 50. Okay, so it's it's pretty close. Wigan interface, Wigan 26-bit interface, pin virtual card number, um, alarm output load. 500 milliamps so that's a lot smaller and um, idle current 25 milliamps active current 80 milliamps so once it's activated you're drawing 80 and it'll stand on standby for about 45 milliamps so not a lot of power so you should be able to draw that from a lot of different places operating temperature uh, minus 40 degrees Celsius to uh, 70 degrees Celsius okay height is 134 by 48 by 25 so and 175 grams nothing nothing too much so there's your uh, you got all your wiring there you've got basically your common then you've got a normally normally closed normally open uh, line so that's basically your trigger lines after that you've got a, a negative pole a positive pole that's just basically a positive and negative request to open so when you you can actually set it up with a button and one another one of the flaws of it if you know which wire that is set it up with the if it's a system set up with a button you could simply bridge those two wires and also if you're using it as a trigger for let's say an automatic door or something along those lines if you know which wires um, are the circuit you can pretty much do that as well so it's it's not you know when you when it's fitted to a wall if you were to grab it and pull it off you'd be left with this black cable so being able to decipher the wires is half of the security a lot of car alarms do that they have all their wires in black um, unfortunately I can't do it in this one here but if all the wires were black that would add more security but unfortunately they're not uh, we have the doorbell that's just a straight dry contact and we also have the door alarm setting where it can sense whether or not um, the lock or door has come back to its correct position normally that's in the electric strike so when the electric strike closes uh, light and sounds uh, yeah so you've got a red light that's solid then the light kind of goes orange and then it goes green so this little one here has three different colors and we also have the one beat the two beat and the three beat to tell us when we're treating it right and when we're doing it wrong we can modify the admin code all that's fairly straightforward and we can use it on another system as well as far as um, just using it as a, a slave keypad and slave reader so the w wiring diagram there it is there uh, where are we there see it's nothing nothing too flash it's fairly straightforward this is the sort of system that you could probably get going on about four wires although you're looking at all these wires you know and you're saying oh what's this what's that you pretty much could get it going you can get it going on four wires if what you're running has a dry contact a lot of automatic doors can work off a dry contact um, if you want an exit button then you'd be running it off six wires if you want a door alarm then you know you'd be up to eight wires if you want to monitor the door in the idle position then you'd be up to probably you know 10 wires and it goes on from there so generally speaking it's simple circuitry of a simple circuit of two wires on each sort of part of it power two wires um, the dry trigger to open a, a separate device two wires the door alarm two wires the push button two wires so you get the idea two wires um, so pretty straightforward actually I mean for the money um, not too bad um, not too bad at all you know you get what you pay for and for 50 bucks IP67 rating you put it out the front um, you could control a gate you could put it out the front of your office and um, or have it as um, an internal type of access control system um, to you know inside an office where most of the time people are not going to be attacking it but you want that convenience of being able to use a pin number to access what you want uh, you know for staff and things some of the downsides to this is there is no USB port on the back there's nothing so you know if you wanted to see the data off it you cannot do that the next downside to it is if you wanted to delete particular users it's one of those things you actually have to re uh, well, write a list when you program it up you know um, such as user 12 user 13 user 14 then you can go through and actually delete those individual users very similar to the uh, pack one very similar actually so that's how you would do it there's no display there's no plug-in there's no connect to a phone or anything along those lines it's basically put it into um, programming mode put in what you want it to do such as a command let's say command 5 is delete and then you would put in your user and then you would go enter and that would basically tell it to delete that 
one position. So it's a little bit barbaric in that sense, but I'm saying that it still works and still functional if you can work out the instructions. So the first thing we're going to do is actually, if we've come across this and somebody says, oh, can you reset the codes or something's going funky with it and you want to start again for the programming, let's just start again and default it so that now we have access to it. Once we default it, we get a uh, master code, the standard master code, which is 777777. Once we've got the master code in, we can go through and delete all users, reprogram in users, and reset times and functions and all that sort of stuff. So to do that, we simply uh, hold down the start button and remove power. Now, if we want to introduce the cards, we would simply reapply power. And once we've reapplied, we would go add and add. If we don't want to do that and we just want to use user positions, we can simply reapply power and hold down the key for more than 10 seconds. So let's go through and do this now. We'll start off by doing the cards. So we're going to reapply, we're going to hold the star, reapply power, give it a second or two. Now we're going to add the add card first. Now we're going to do the delete card. Okay, now we, if the light's solid, we're good to go. We can simply use the add card to add a tag. Let's add that one. Star star till light's red again. Now we've added a tag. Let's check it. It's added. Now let's go through and delete. Star star. Now it's back in its standby state. Let's check it. Doesn't work. Okay, so that's how you use those two cards there. Let's go through now and program it using user ID, which is probably the better way to do it because you've got more control. So we're going to hold down the star, remove power, reconnect power and hold down the star continuously until we go past 10 seconds. Then we'll get some more funny beeps. Okay, so we've passed that stage now. So now we can put these silly tags aside and now we can get into the programming. Okay, so the programming master code is 7777. Let's do that. So star 777777 hash. First thing we want to delete is delete all users. So we would go two for delete and then we go 0000 hash. And then we exit programming mode light solid so now no matter what we present everything is deleted okay that's a good place to start now the second place we need to start is the admin code the admin code cannot be left as double seven double seven if somebody knows the system and they come up with the admin code they can simply go um, star double seven double seven double seven uh, one to add and then position 50 put in their new code twice push star and they would basically have installed their own code and you would never know never be any wiser remember this is a standalone system there's no usb there's no notifications there's no nothing to tell you that there's a new code or anything in there so very important start off with after a big default is to change your master code to something more secure so to do that let's go through and do that so we go star default code double seven double seven double seven and um, then we go hash and then we go position zero for admin code we put our new code in which is six digits so we'll go one two three four five six hash and it'll ask us to repeat it one two three four five six hash and then we go we you know actually check it so we get out until the light keep pushing the star until the light solid now if we try double seven double seven double seven it shouldn't let us get into programming mode the light shouldn't blink it should be solid and it should say no nah, it's not right so let's try it star double seven double seven double seven hash and it's not correct so now our master code has changed to one two three four five six super secure super high security for this example okay so let's go through now and add um add a user so what we're going to do is we're going to get in programming mode again starting off with the star one two three four five six um hash and to add we go one now we give it a position so we're going to start off let's say as position 10 and then we present let's say a token maybe hash present token that token's now installed and then um, we can jump out of that and test that tag now works okay now we're going to perform the simple task of adding and deleting a user and assigning it a user position so we go through and we push star we put in our master master pin number one two three four five six hash we want to add so we go position we go one for add 
Now we give it a, an actual position, and for this position I'm going to go 55, hash. Now I can put in my code between 4 and 6 digits. 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, hash, and it will repeat. You need to repeat it. 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, and that should be it. So we jump out by just pushing the star button until it lights solid. We try it, and it works. So position 55 now has the code 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2. Now let's remove it. Star, mask code 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, hash, 2 for removal, 55 for its location, hash, and that should have removed it. So we go star, star, wait for the light to go solid. Now we can simply go through and we can, we can try our code and see if it actually works. Uh, what was our code? 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, hash and it doesn't work. So many codes, so many numbers. So that's to simply add and remove a code. Now, I gave it position 55. You can actually set these tags up with a position as well. So if I wanted to, uh, okay, well, let's set this tag up as well. The idea between these, giving it a position, I gave it 55, means that if I want to just delete that one code and leave the rest of the system alone, I can. If I write it down on a piece of paper, I can. If I uh, simply write down exactly what to push, I can walk up to it, go beep, 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 and these days your phone's very good for that. Once you're programming, it doesn't hurt to actually write down the procedure in your phone, in the notes somewhere, and when you come back up against the system, if you want to activate it or deactivate something, it's easy enough to just say, here's the list, I want to activate number 55, go through, you know, master code, two for delete, position 55, hash, and it'll delete it. So it's, it's that simple. Uh, let's go through now and add a tag in position 56, okay? So star, one, two, three, four, five, six for the master code, hash, uh, one to add, and then we select position 56, hash, we present a token to it, okay? And we might have to present it twice. No, we don't. We just jump out of it. Wait for the light to go red, test it. It's working. Now let's remove that tag. Star, one, two, three, four, five, six to get us in programming mode, hash, position two, and then our location, which was 56, hash, and then we push the star star to get out of programming mode. Once the light's solid, we're good to go. Present the token, shouldn't work. Doesn't work. Okay, so that's how to simply add a code uh, and delete a code. So that's our quick review on this $50 eBay IP rated standalone access control system. Not bad, fairly simple to use, very similar to the pack systems. And um, leave your comments down below. It's good for places where you don't need a high security system, but you do need something, and you don't want to run multiple different systems or have to run wires to connect to the current system. This system, you simply just apply power, and you can use it as a trigger, or you can apply power and use it as a trigger to run a relay. You can do so many different things. So that's where the benefits of it are, is that it's cheap, it's a, it's a standalone one, one unit, but the downside is that, that yes, it can be manipulated. You do need to remove that master code off it, but it can be manipulated because it is a one unit. I mean, if you were to crack this open, you can find out where the power is, you can find out where your latching is, things along those lines. So it's not, it's not going to stop uh, an electri electronically minded uh, professional, you know, burglar, but it will keep most people out and give a lot of people um, some sort of access control on a, on a lower level. Okay, thanks for watching.